So he said this on TV, this particular pastor. And by the way, there are very, very many anointed mega church pastors that are true men and women of God that are serving God and preaching the truth at great cost. Not every church that preaches the truth can say that they can stay small. You can't. The problem is when you tell the truth in love and you're anointed of God, it, Jesus will show up at church. And when Jesus shows up, there's always a crowd because humanity will beat a path to go anywhere where Jesus is. Somebody said, how are you filling this tent? Because I've invited Christ into it. And he said, yes, I'll come in your tent and I'll make the lame walk and the blind see and the deaf hear. And I'll instantly deliver the, I'm gonna run around this room in a second, I'm getting. But we have imprisoned the body of Christ in meaningless rituals where one day a week we act like animals in a zoo and the zookeeper feeds us. And as long as we condone to stay in our cages and be absolutely malleable and tame, we'll have church. And on our wake, we lost a nation. We should have been the dangerous Christian. We should have been the anointed Christian. We should have been the mouthy one, the kind that says, oh no, you're not gonna tell my child that. Oh no, you're not gonna write that law. Oh no, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have it. No, we became passive. Am I preaching? We became, I don't want anyone to think I'm unloving. There is no worse hatred in the world than to prevent someone from knowing the truth because you're afraid of what it will mean to you and cost you. If you're afraid of losing members, you hate your people. If you're afraid of telling what the Bible teaches, you hate your people. So he said, he quoted the first half of a verse. The greatest lie is a half truth. He said, Jesus went about doing good. And then he stopped and he looked at the crowd. He said, that's what I want. I want a congregation that does good. I want you to go and mow the lawn of an elderly person that's shut in. Bake them a pie. Give someone a smile. Let someone in your lane, which is almost impossible in California. And so you're sitting there, and how can I question that? How can I look at that and say that's not right? Because in the light of who Jesus is, I'm preaching tonight that we are no longer going to let people hijack Jesus Christ. Because Jesus never said that. Here's what the book of Acts said. He went about doing good destroying the works of the devil, healing all who were oppressed of Satan, for God was with him. How's this? Instead of baking a pie, get somebody to stand up out of a wheelchair in the name of Jesus. Get a prostitute delivered of a devil. Watch God open a blind eye, heal a camp. I need to preach a little bit more. I maybe would rather do that. Instead of mowing a lawn, how about we mow down the works of darkness? Follow what 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says. Casting down every vain imagination. For the weapons of all warfare are not carnal. They're not social. They're not a fad. But they're mighty through God to destroying what is suffocating America right now. Glory to, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. You don't get to leave out the parts that America needs to know that to become a Christian means this, your sadness evaporates. 
your fear vaporizes. Your bondage is instantly over. You, let me tell you, people say, well, we need to explain Christianity to people. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do just the opposite because the peace he gives passes understanding. And the joy is unspeakable and full of glory. You wonder why did we grow so fast in the Jesus movement? People don't understand this. When I say it, they don't understand what I'm saying. I said it's because we did not know how to witness. And we had two problems in the Jesus movement. Number one, we didn't know how to witness. And number two is we didn't know when to stop witnessing. We were, we're like, like, dude, you don't make any sense, but there's so much joy on you. There's so much life. I knew you before. See, we, in the Jesus movement, we had friends that knew us before. And man, when you, when I knew you before, you were strung out, dead. Your eyes were dead. Your spirit's dead. Now I look at you and you're alive. You're alive. What happened to you? Man, I don't know how to explain it, but you need some of this. You need Jesus. You need the joy. We're saying it now. I don't know how many times in the Jesus movement someone would say to me, a classmate, a friend, an enemy, I don't know what you've got, but I've got to have it. My mama, today, uh, thanks to having lunch with Pastor Greg and Kathy, I was treated to a chili relleno made by a Mexicano lady. A Mexicana. I had tears in my eyes, man. You know, I live in Tennessee and they, they're, they're still, it's a, it's a work in progress to make Mexican food. They put white cheese on everything and they think that's what we want. So, foamy white cheese, by the way. When, when I bit into that, when I bit into that today, and I had a thousand memories. You know what the Bible says in closing? Cause watch. Why do you spend your money on that which is not? Come to the waters, drink freely. Buy bread without money and meat without money. I'm going to tell you the biggest lie that we've ever told about the Christian faith in California. I've studied Hinduism, Buddhism. I can keep up with the people that know these esoteric religions I studied them I know what they're saying nobody is going to walk up to me with that palaver of the mystical levels the pantheon the, the Tibetan book of the dead the levels of enlightenment nirvana forget it it's not going to work on me for me it goes over like a pregnant pole vaulter because I have tasted Jesus. Help me somebody.